Hi everyone. Um, in the first lecture, we talk, talked about compaction concept and uh, optimum um, water content and maximum dry density. Now we are going to move to uh, methods and equipment. Okay? And I'm going to be showing lots of uh, images in this and some of them are from your book and some are from mainly from Caterpillar website. So in conventional earthwork, there are six steps, and I'm not going to go to details of that, but you should have basic, uh, really, what are the basic steps. First is definitely you have to, before you start any kind of construction, you have to remove vegetation, debris, and any kind of uh, waste material, and this process is called grubbing. And then if the material has to be removed, uh, which we call as a fill, then you have to select different type of excavator where, which will dig the material out and then that material has to be uh, really transported from the site. Now digging and excavating soil uh, is not so easy because some certain type of soils look like loose but they may be highly compacted and cemented and uh, one can underestimate the time and type of equipment needed. And sometimes shear wave velocity, which is a really measurement of how fast the shear wave velocity, the shear waves can transmit through a soil, uh, gives a very good idea how easy it is to excavate or what is this process called ripping. Uh, this is a figure from your textbook and what they have is coming from Caterpillar and they have given here different type of soils and including different types of rocks here. And here are the ranges of shear wave velocities of these soils given in 1000 meter per second. And as you can see, as the shear wave velocity increases, it becomes harder and harder for any kind of equipment to excavate. So if you look at the gray area, which is right here for clay glacial till, these materials are easily rippable when the shear wave velocity is less than 2000 meter per second. But if it is really a rock, then you need to have a lot of effort um, or plan to have a lot of effort for really removing the material or sometime we have to take a technique of blasting the material. There are many different kind of different or equipment which can be used and here are two from uh, Caterpillar. Uh, one is a track mounted and another is a wheel mounted. I haven't used them so I really don't know how it feels to use these equipment in the field. Um, but you will see that in Dr. Jennifer Smith's lecture she talks about a project where she decided to have wheel mounted um, equipment but turned out to be salt to be very soft and saturated and constantly this was really, uh, the wheel was sticking in the soil and in that the best thing is to think about what is really what is called track mounted. Uh, you need to select the right type of load uh, loader which is called to remove the soil or stop the soil. And then third step is really the transport and placement. Now transport can be through basically road and if the distance are within 100 or 200 meter or even uh, one or two miles then you can think about different type of bulldozer and wheel loaders to transport soils but if distance are very long which is generally a case in earth dam projects then you have to think about conveyor belt and I'll show you some pictures of that. And after the transport and placement, our next step is moisture conditioning, which is mean addition of moisture. And then finally is really the soil compaction, um, which really our desired goal. So here is a large dump truck, um, and this can only travel on a good uh, roads and highway. If your roads are just really not strong, then this will have a problem. And there are smaller dump trucks and of different sizes which are available and one can find a lot of this information at Caterpillar website. 
And here is the conveyor belt built um, for a, a Seaman Oak Dam in California where the distance um, of transporting the sediments from a site was around two miles. So trucks are not really a good alternative and conveyor belt were used. And here again from Caterpillar and uh, depending on economical haul distance and meters, they are suggesting different type of equipment uh, which can be used. Now I showed you this graph, uh, graph or figure earlier and I just want to point out here that different type of soils needs different amount of water to reach optimum, uh, to reach maximum unit weight or dry density. If you look at here silty clay material it needs almost maybe 16 17 percent water content uh, to reach the maximum density and if we take the silty sand and uh, the pitch might need this is eight and maybe nine percent water content so in general fine grain soil needs more water to reach optimum and coarse grain soils need less water to reach optimum okay now this is a picture again I think coming from Caterpillar um, where this water is being sprayed on the fill and keep in mind these fills are placed in layers or which is called lift and lift thickness can vary between 8 inch to 12 or 14 inches so for every lift this water will be added if we need to increase the water content. And this is very important graph to remember. Okay, so we have a fill material which is in natural condition and this is my favorite phase diagrams. It has solids, it has water and it has air. And we remove the soil or excavate the soil and when we do excavate it generally we increase the air voids and this process is called bulking. Okay and there's a different amount of bulking in a different type of soil. For example, um, sand and gravel, maybe I don't remember completely, but they can bulk maybe 10 to 12 percent or 15 percent, where silty clay material can bulk as much as 30 percent. So you have to keep in mind. After the material is has increased in size and we transport it, let's assume during transportation it didn't change anything and then we find the water content is not enough so we add certain additional amount of water so this is a water which we added by spraying it and so this process is called moisture conditioning and after that is done we are still in a lift then we will apply a compactive energy by selected type of rollers and which will remove some of the air and soil will be compacted or densified and at a given unit weight and moisture content and which is going to come from where? From your lab data. Now there are different type of compactive um, equipment which we call roller. Uh, they can be static or dynamic. Dynamic means they are applying certain kind of vibration and there is a third type which we call kneeling. Uh -oh. N E A L. I think spelling is correct in there. Kneeling, and I'll explain to you a little bit more. So here are different type of equipment. This is roller. This is smooth wheel roller. This is a sheep foot roller where the kneeling action happens. This is a rubber tire roller, vibratory roller and then this is more in the field technique okay so this is the different I'm going to talk about that now most of these rollers are designed to have low contact pressure okay between the tire or track and the soil okay so they can travel quickly because they you don't want them to stuck so contact pressure is the most important parameter before we, we need to know that before we select a type of roller. For example, 
sheep foot roller have a very very high um, contact pressure 500 kpa and far greater than track mounted equipment where some rollers which apply impact uh, would have a different type of it doesn't have a, a actually contact pressure but here we are densifying soil by either vibration or applying an impact so it's had a the mechanical energy has a dynamic component to it and then of course vibration which is we are applying mechanical energy but it is in a form of a vibration and where amplitude and frequency of the vibration will be decided and then we have what we call kneeling which I try to write kneeling or manipulation and this is a different kind of roller these are particularly good for silt and clays so let's look at some of the soil compaction in the field so it could be done done by small compactors where we are applying vibration this is again small compactors uh, and vibratory plate these are the different type of roller this is a sheep foot roller and this is we call a dynamic compaction and I'll come back to these ones one at a time so I have a couple of actually five or six slides showing the different type of rollers so this is a drum roller is a small drum roller and these can come in different sizes and different weight and if there are vibratory this can be smooth drum but vibratory then it is really very good for granular soil and what are the granular soil sand and gravel and these material really densify very well with the help of vibration now here is a interesting roller and instead of a smooth wheel there are grids on the roller and this roller is very good for granular means large particle soil particularly gravel and rocky soil means which has a very large fragment of uh, fractured rock uh, second type of rollers are uh, first is a smooth uh, wheel roller and then these are called pneumatic roller and here instead of one wheel you have multiple tires and so there can be five they can be six or they, these are five they are six and they have generally uh, the width the yeah, lift uh, or the width here is not very high and contact pressures are around six six hundred kpa and these kind of pneumatic rollers are good for both sand and gravel and silt and clay one of the most interesting roller uh, is called sheep foot roller and here the contact pressures are very very high and it was very interesting story I don't think a story is probably is a real um, case where contractor his name was Gillett uh, was left his project overnight and flock of sheep had done excellent job when he came in the morning he saw his soil was more silty clay that the, the it is site or the fill material was very well compacted and what was really happening in the night or evening and the flock of sheep were just walking across the fill material and really compacted that material and it gave him an idea that if he can develop a roller which can have the same action what the sheep walking in on the fill uh, can create that then it would be wonderful and here the compaction is really achieved in the soil by pressure and manipulation which is called kneeling action and this is a most commonly used roller for silty clay material and important to have that lift thickness should not be very very large because otherwise manipulation will not be done right so here is a picture of a very old in 1940 probably one of the earliest one sheep foot roller and you can see there are multiple legs as if multiple sheep are walking across this fill material and here there's a contact pressure where this uh, this uh, feet is really touching the soil it's going to penetrate through the soil as the the roller is going to move 
it will come out of the soil and this process is called manipulation or kneading process and this really is ideal method to compact silty clay material. There are many different type of sheet foot roller and how they are pushed they are also different. Here is a toe sheet foot roller picture of this one and here is self propeller uh, sheet foot roller. They come in different um, patterns of sheet and, or of uh, sheet foot and different spacing and different depth and so on and so on. Now this is a very interesting compactor. This is not roller, it's a compactor. And as you can see here, it's not a wheel. It's a, it has a really more like a triangle shape. And here uh, inside that is a imbalance or like a weight. So as this is being pushed, an impact load is applied on the soil. An impact is just like a vibration, except it is applied like in, just like in the lab when you are compacting the soil with a hammer, you are applying impact. Okay, so exactly the same thing is done here in the field. And this is also a way of densifying the soil, just like what you are you have done in the lab. Now, uh, this is a, a figure from your textbook, I think. And so what we have here is different type of soil, clay, silt, sand, and rock. And here are recommendations for different type of rollers. For example, if material is gravelly material, more grit type of roller. If fill is more sand, vibratory type of roller. If it's sand and silt, then smooth steel drum roller if we have more of a silt and then toad tempered foot roller or high speed temp temping foot roller and then you can see that really nobody is using 100% clay because that is not really ideal fill material for any kind of project. So I think we have covered at this point about type of rollers and uh, what really selection cr uh, criteria would be and a uh, lot of this knowledge, non knowledge really exists with uh, contractors who do a lot of compaction projects so one should really uh, take an advantage of that. Caterpillar and there's one of the largest pr company in United States which has all kind of compact and equipment and one can take advantage of information they have too. So at this point I'm going to take a break and then we are going to come to the next part of the uh, chapter which we are going to